Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, brothers and sisters. I welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to Kingdom Builders Summit 2021. This is the best place to be at this time. And I assure you that we have gathered unto the Lord. We have come to answer the call of the captain of this rising army. And uh, I am very certain, I am very sure that this is going to be a very uh, life-changing experience for, for, for you, for me, for every one of us, for this generation and for the next generation. So I uh, we hereby uh, declare uh, this summit open in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, this summit is going to last for seven days, and we'll be having different ministers uh, of the gospel, different generations. I'm sure you must have seen the flyer. Uh, I consider it a great privilege to be speaking to us at this time, but I want you to sit back. I want you to open your hearts to the Lord. I want you to uh, receive all that he has for you. I want you to receive all that he has for us. I want you to um, just open yourself up to receive all that God has prepared uh, for us at this summit. And I pray that as we as we do so, the Lord is going to help and bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, before we jump into the... Uh, the, the ministration for tonight, I want to just remind us, of course, that uh, the, the theme, the burden for this week-long baptism is uh, next generation, the waiting, the camping, and the marching. The waiting, the camping, and the marching in the name of Jesus. Uh, Join me as, as we pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for another privilege to gather unto you uh, uh, since last year when we had the last um, edition of this. We thank you because you have prepared uh, the ministrations of the Spirit for us. You have prepared your word. You've prepared your thoughts. You've prepared even your own impartation for us this evening. We thank you for all that you uh, bringing us into as a body, uh, as the church. We thank you for all that you are bringing us into as a generation. And we thank you for all that you are bringing each one of us into the next phases of our lives. Thank you, Father. As we go into this word, I ask for simplicity, for clarity, and yet that all my words come with uh, power and with understanding. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So uh, once again, I welcome everyone um, to this summit. Uh, this is going to be a very life-changing experience for you. Uh, so let's just go uh, right into it. So much of what I am going to be doing today is, to, I believe, is to lay a foundation upon which um, the rest of the speakers are going to build as the time goes on. Well, maybe I just think maybe it's something, it's like the basics uh, that we may not want to easily consider when we meet like this. Uh, so I want you to, if you have your parchments with you, I want you to grab them where you can make notes. If you have your scriptures with you or your Bible, I want you to pull it um, aside so that you can flip through and you don't have to... Um, um, change your screen uh, to check scriptures on your phone. So first of all, I welcome you to this apostolic prophetic gathering. And that's where I'm going to start from. We want to first of all try to understand this thing that people say apostolic prophetic. What does it mean? What exactly does it mean? Are they just um, spiritual buzzwords um, that are used to capture people or to make some people feel Are they just spiritual words that some people use to, um, you know, make themselves feel spiritual and some others feel as though, uh, well, we that don't know uh, anything, what are we going to do? No. So we want to try to uh, break those things down very quickly. And we have quite a long, uh, a long journey. Uh, 
So the first thing that we want to do is to uh, find out what is prophecy? Who is the prophet? Sorry, apologies for, for the break. So I said, the first thing we want to look at is what is prophecy? Who is the prophet? And then what, what does it mean to be prophetic? So we are looking at prophecy, prophet, prof, being prophetic. And then at the same time, we are also going to look at the apostle and what does it mean to be apostolic? An understanding of this is going to help every one of us to um, uh, get all that we have or all that God has in stock rather for us this week. Now, what is prophecy? Prophecy refers to utterances, utterances that come from the realm of God, all right? And so when we say there are utterances that come from the realm of God, we are saying uh, speakings that come from the, uh, number one, the predeterminate counsel of God, and then number two, uh, or on the other side, the manifested counsel of God. I'm going to explain what that means. Now, before God... Uh, created the heaven and the earth. Uh, please, I, I, I want to know if, if uh, you're following me. Before God created the heaven and the earth, he had something in his heart. He had something in mind that he wanted to do. And that was already completed. Amen. And so um, when we speak or when people speak from the end or from, from the abundance of that which God had already a plant that you want to do, you want to do rather, then that is prophecy. So it is coming from the realm of the predeterminate counsel of God. In other words, that which God had foreordained that he would do. Now, the second harm of this is what is, what is called the manifested counsel of God. Now, what does that mean? It refers to uh, the things that eventually happened. Uh, for example, it, it wasn't uh, God's, you know, uh, God's will, in quotes, for Hiram and Eve to fall, right? It wasn't like God's will for them to do that. But there was uh, another portion of his preparation ahead for it, which is more like the manifested. So the manifested counsel is what eventually happened. Uh, it's like what will eventually happen in future. For example, so you see things like... Um, Okay, we are going to get there where prophets begin to prophesy about the things that will happen in 10 years to come, things that will happen in 30 years to come. So those things that are being prophesied, they are either a part of the predeterminate counsel of God, that is what God himself designed that should happen. But you know that many times creation tampers with the predeterminate counsel of God, partly by our disobedience, by our uh, uh, misalignment, not aligning in obedience to the will of God. So we kind of delay a lot of things. So that's more like uh, what gives room for the manifested counsel. Hallelujah. Are we together? And so uh, when we talk about prophecy, we talk about the Holy Spirit expressing the thoughts of God through the human vessels. Uh, we talk about the Holy Spirit expressing the thoughts of God through human vessels. And that's exactly just what prophecy is. So who is a prophet? A prophet is someone that is called by God and commissioned by God into an office. Hallelujah. He is called by God, commissioned by God into an office. And such that such person is able to perceive the specific. Now, I want to pay, pay attention to that. The prophet is able to perceive the specific mind of God for an individual, for individuals or for the local church or for the body of Christ at large or for, or for, for nations. Hallelujah. Amen. So as we said, the, 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 the prophet is able to uh, talk about, is able to relay, is able to perceive and to discharge the specific 
specific will of God for individuals, the specific will of God for local church, like a local assembly where people gather, and also the specific will of God for the entire body of Christ. Amen and amen. And of course, for nations as well. So you see that when it comes to uh, the prophet, prophets have scopes, what you can call scopes in uh, the scope of the ministry or, or a scope of their assignment. Amen and amen. So in the scriptures, for example, you will see two kinds of prophet. You will see those, or maybe not two kinds of prophets, but you will see two operations of prophets, things that prophets do. Number one, are the prophets that foretell the future. So they talk about the things that will happen in the future. An example is Isaiah. Most of his prophecies most of the things they said were regarding things that will happen. So he prophesied about the coming Messiah, prophesied about the, 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 the coming heaven and earth, prophesied about all, all, a lot of things that were going to happen. Amen and amen. Another example is the, the, the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah prophesied that Israel would be, uh, would be taken into captivity. So he prophesied what will happen uh, to a nation. Hallelujah. Again, that is regarding to foretelling, all right? But the second part of this, of what prophets do, is to give context to present happenings. Hallelujah. So the, the, the part of the things that prophets also do, which is the second part, is to explain, all right? So they explain, you know, what God is saying at the moment, all right? So what they really deal with is the moment and not just the future. Glory to God. Amen. Example of this, of course, um, Daniel also did a lot of foretelling about what would happen in the future, but he also uh, uh, prophesied uh, concerning the, the, the present issues, the present matter. For example, uh, Daniel chapter 9, the Bible tells us that I, Daniel, understood by the books the number that Israel ought to spend in captivity. Amen. So Daniel, uh, being the prophet, was able to interpret the present writings of God. He was able to interpret the present things that were happening in, with, in context to what God wanted to do at that present time. Hallelujah. An example of this prophet is also the prophet Elijah. Glory to God. The prophet Elijah. Now, the prophet Elijah, of course, of course there's, no, there's no record of that anywhere in the scriptures, but the prophet Elijah didn't say anything about the future, at least that I can remember now. But majority of what his ministry was all about was to interpret the present time. Amen. And part of what the, the, the spirit of Elijah does is to turn the hearts of the people onto God in the present time. So when we talk about the church, the body of Christ, all of us being prophetic, uh, we are really talking about it in the light of the spirit of Elijah, because that's also uh, from where John the Baptist came from. And that's why John the Baptist, uh, when they were asking him, are you Elijah and all that, in fact, he was even dressing like Elijah, the whole um, wearing of animal skin, eating wild honey and all that. But Elijah, uh, uh, John rather, John said that I am a voice, all right, in the wilderness, making the, the path of his Lord, all right, making it straight. Amen. Glory to God. All right. So the same way that John the Baptist in the spirit of Elijah prepared a way for the Lord, all right, interpreting the present time is the same way that the body of Christ in the last days is going to also prepare a way for the second return of the Lord. So uh, there's a whole lot that has to do with interpreting the present, um, the present occurrences um, uh, in light of the will of God. Hallelujah. So that is a uh, part of what prophets do. So what does it mean to be prophetic? When we say being prophetic, what does it mean? Now, being prophetic, all right, whether we're talking about uh, being a prophetic minister or being or having a prophetic ministry or being a prophetic people. Amen. We are saying uh, there are people that believe in the expressions of the spirit. Amen. The expression of the spirit regarding uh, uh, regarding the prophetic. Let me let me explain what that means. So regarding for example, the operations of the spirit regarding, let's say, for example, the gifts of prophecy. All right. So there are people who believe in the expression of the Holy Spirit through the gift of prophecy. 
They also believe in the expression of the gifts of the word of knowledge. They believe in the expression of gifts of uh, word of, of wisdom. Uh, in short, summarily, every manifestation, every expression of the Holy Spirit that has to do with uh, relaying the mind of God to people, relaying the mind of God unto us. People, anyone who believes in that, all right, and then submits to those expressions can be considered being prophetic. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, they also recognize the place of prophet and prophecy. They understand that prophets have been sent into the body of Christ, and they also understand the use of prophecy. Amen and amen. Now, they are also, finally, they are those that are open. They are open to, and this is, this is very important. Being prophetic means that you are open to know the present will of God. You are, you are, you are, you are positioned to knowing what exactly is God doing now in Nigeria? What exactly is God doing now in my generation? What exactly is God doing now in my city? What exactly is God doing now in my school? What exactly is God doing now in my place of work? Now, so that, that is what it means to be prophetic. So when they say uh, prophetic, prophetic ministry or prophetic people or prophetic minister, it's about making the will of God known, all right? Whether it's the predetermined counsel of God or it's the manifested counsel of things that eventually happen, it's about making that known to people. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Now, so let's just jump right into uh, the apostolic so that we can understand what it means when we say that kbs is a prophetic uh, an apostolic prophetic uh, is a gathering of um, apostolic prophetic people all right it's important for us to know what these two things mean and we don't want to assume that every one of us understand that all right so who is an apostle now i, I don't want to assume that everyone here knows the the fivefold ministry but if you go open your bibles to Ephesians chapter number four, and if we start our reading from uh, verse seven, eight, and then downward, it talks about Jesus Christ ascending uh, to heaven after that he had descended to hell, and then he gave gifts unto men. Hallelujah. And then it tells us that, and he gives some to be apostles, and some to be prophets, and some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. For the what? For the perfection of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, all right? Now, so we see that we already have the fivefold uh, ministry or the fivefold gifts as, as, or the ascension gifts, as you may understand, whether fourfold or fivefold, as you may have, have understood them to be. Now, what are they? They are the extension of the, uh, the headship ministry of Jesus Christ to his body. I'll take that again. The fivefold ministry, the fivefold gifts, all those uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, um, prophets, uh, sorry, evangelists, and then pastors and teachers, they are the extension of the headship ministry of Christ to his body. Amen and amen. And so apostles are anointed. They are anointed to lay the foundation. Now, I'm going to explain what that means. Uh, uh, I will explain what that means by explaining what the apostolic ministry is. Okay. So when we talk about apostolic ministry, an apostolic ministry uh, is the foundation for the building of the body of Christ, but the apostles are the ones that lay the foundation, all right? So if, for example, if you, okay, let's just flip over to Ephesians chapter number two, if you have your Bibles. I'm trying to uh, rush over this so that uh, we can jump right into this. Ephesians chapter two, and we start reading from verse 19, okay? So what does it say? It says, now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been, having been built on, excuse me, on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Can you see that? In other words, the body of Christ, Jesus Christ designed the body of Christ 
to be built on the foundation of apostles and prophets. Now, he, is, he did not design that the body of Christ will be built on apostles and prophets, but that the body of Christ will be built on the apostolic and the prophetic amen on the apostolic ministry and the prophetic ministry now we're going to explain that and that is going to as i said uh my my job tonight is to lay a foundation for what we are going to go through in the entire week i have two sessions uh so hopefully i'll go into my core message at the second session uh during the week however i hope that i can lay solid foundations that will help us understand the context for all that we are dealing with for all that we are dealing with, amen and amen. Hallelujah. So, as we said, the apostolic ministry is the foundation for building. Now, along with the prophetic ministry. Now, we just read that in Ephesians chapter number 2 and from verse 19 down to 20. In fact, it tells us that Jesus Christ himself is the chief cornerstone, amen. Amen. Jesus Christ himself is the chief cornerstone. And then it says that in whom the whole building being fitted together, the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Hallelujah. The whole building, all of us, all right, being built upon the foundations that apostles lay and prophets lay. And of course, Jesus Christ is the reference point. That is what cornerstone implies. That is what that deals with. Jesus Christ himself is the reference, is the chief cornerstone, the first block that is laid for that building. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. So apostles are actually for foreigners. Amen. Apostles are foreigners. Now, in terms of of the actualization of God's plans. Now we are beginning to enter into uh, the, the, the synergy between the apostles the, and the prophets, between the apostolic and the prophetic. The apostles are the foreigners, okay, in terms of the actualization of God's plans. But when it comes to the receiving, all right, the knowing of God's plans, the prophets are the foreigners. So the way it is, is that the prophetic ministry brings us into knowing, please pay attention to that. The prophetic ministry brings the body of Christ into knowing the present, the specific will of God for a present time. Amen. But the apostolic ministry brings the body of Christ into the actualization of what God has released through the prophetic ministry. I'm going to say that again. The prophetic ministry brings the entire body of Christ to knowing what God has to say to a generation, what God has to say to individuals, to a nation, to a church, or to the body of Christ. But when it comes to the actualization, all right, the, the manifestation of it, God gave to the apostles to be the front runners. So they are the ones who, you know, take the lead. They are the ones who take the blames. They are the ones who kind of, so that's why they are called bulldozers. Uh, they make quite a number of mistakes because they have to do many things that they are doing for the first time. Amen. Are we together? And so apostles, uh, being an apostle comes with the, 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 the weight of being criticized. Amen and amen. I don't want to go deeper than that, but I believe we've been able to get the synergy. So the prophet, the, the, the prophetic ministry or the prophetic brings us it. And the apostolic ministry begins to expound on it. I, I will take that again. The prophetic ministry sees into what God's plan is and then declares it's the body of Christ, right? And then the apostles and the apostolic ministry then picks the things that the prophets have said. They then, they then break it down to the things that people can chew, that the body of Christ can chew. They also give us uh, structure, and I'm going to get there. So they step it down the same way you have uh, a step down transformer. So the apostles step down whatever the prophets have said to what the entire body of Christ can receive and then can, uh, can, 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 can be mobilized for, you know, let's use, let's use, let's use uh, that, that language. Amen and amen. 
the, the, they can break it down to what we can experience, what we can then call an experience in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. So the, the, they are the foundations, or they are not the foundations, rather, as we said, but they lay the foundations. So the apostolic ministry lays the foundation for the actualization in two aspects. Are we still together? Amen and amen. Are we blessed? Glory to God. So they lay the foundation on two aspects. They lay the foundation for structure. Okay. So part of the things that uh, we are going to be seeing in this, in this, uh, in this conference over the next seven, seven days is we are going to see strong prophetic. In other words, relaying of the present will of God for this generation. Amen and amen. You are also going to hear God's specific will for your life. You are going to hear it directly. And you are going to know, oh, this is God's word unto me. Hallelujah. And then you are also going to receive the apostolic dimension, which is that there is going to be a breaking down of the things that God is releasing to something that you can understand. Now, that is why apostles have the apt ability to teach. Apostles can break or the apostolic gift can break things down to what the body of Christ can then understand. You can see that strongly in the life of Apostle Paul. Glory to God. Hallelujah and hallelujah. So uh, the, 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 I was talking about the foundations that the, the apostolic ministry lay. They lay it uh, uh, a structure. When we talk about structure, it, it, it comes with alignment. Alignment for the body of Christ, alignment for individuals, and then it also comes with doctrine, you know, setting, uh, 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 bringing whatever the prophets have said into the context of what is agreeable with the entire scripture. Hallelujah, glory to God. So they, 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 they set the structure for whatever has been released by the prophet. That's why you discover, if you read your Bible closely, in uh, uh, throughout the epistles, you see the apostles expounding on the things that the prophets have said. Now, if you read the prophets alone, you wouldn't see those things, right? But when you read the writings of the apostles, you then begin to see them expounding, bringing to life the things that the prophets have said, and then you can then apply those things to your life, and then those things begin to work for you, all right? So you see that there is no successful apostolic without successful or without a pure undiluted prophetic and then there is no uh, or we can say the prophetic is not useful if there is no apostolic to break it down and to release it into what people can do now remember i also said that the apostolic they are the ones uh, the apostolic spirit helps us to uh, to go to be sent Amen and amen. It helps us to be the sent one. Glory to God. Hallelujah and hallelujah. So I talked about structure. Of course, that also comes with governance. But the second part is the advancement. All right. So the apostolic comes with advancement. The apostolic ministry or the apostolic spirit, or when we say being apostolic, it comes with being able to advance. You are ready to move. You are ready to move. So I, I expect that by the grace of God, after in fact, during this conference, during this course summit, and after the summit, you have, you have specific instructions. Now, you don't just have instructions. You have specific directions, and then you have the required training. You have the steps to take, and then you are ready to go, right? You are ready to go and actualize the things that you have heard. You are ready to actualize the things that have been stewarded from the mountains of God, from the very heart of God unto his people. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So as I said, um, in closing of, of this portion of, of, of things, the successful apostolic ministry is uh, builds what God is building. And I will explain that. So when we talk about builders, uh, and I'll get that in, I'll get there in the closing, uh, when, when closing this particular uh, session of things. A successful apostolic ministry, or you are successful, um, uh, in the apostolic, let me use that uh, because you may not be an you, you may not be an apostle, all right, and yet be apostolic, all right. We are all expected to, to be apostolic. That's why we are here, all right. The, the, the entire body of Christ is expected to be apostolic. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Uh, so the successful apostolic rests 
uh, and builds what God is building. Why? Because they thrive on accurate and pure prophetic ministry. Amen. So if you want to build what God is building, you have to be prophetic. You have to pay attention to what the prophets are saying. You have to pay attention to what the prophets are saying to the body of Christ. So if until now, the, 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 only, the only time that you, 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 you listen to people or something is uh, when, uh, how, do, how do I put it? When it comes to prophet so, 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 you just close, close your ears. Now, I'm, and I'm just talking about, I'm not, I'm not just talking about uh, prophets to certain people or prophets that may not be, be doing the will of God. I'm referring to prophets to the body of Christ, okay? I'm referring to prophets that God has sent to his body. Those are the particularly the ones I'm referring to now uh, because this gathering is for the body of Christ. Hallelujah, amen and amen. That's the way to build what God is building. That's the way to build successfully. You rely on the release of the prophetic just like you will see in this conference and then you can then um, give apostolic order. You can then you know break things down. You can then create a system for those things uh, to be stewarded. Hallelujah. So being apostolic, you have to embrace the ministry of apostles who God, uh, whom God has set as the leaders. God has set them as frontiers when it comes to advancement, advancing certain strategies, advancing certain things into the body of Christ. God has released the apostles to lead the body of Christ into that, okay? So if you see, you may have noticed for some time that there is uh, the rise of apostles in the body of Christ From the 1990s, the, the apostles were restored also to the body of Christ. And then from that time, we began to see strong apostolic spirit even in the Nigerian church. And then uh, it began to come with strong direction. It began to come with order. It began to come with, uh, began to come with specifics. Amen. I don't want us to get distracted. It began to come with specifics to certain things. Glory to God. It began to come with uh, uh, stability for the body of Christ. And then we can now see that we are now advancing. Amen and amen. What we are saying is this. There will be no advancement without the cooperation of the prophetic and the apostolic. All right. And then the rest of the body of Christ has to, uh, we have to, um, accept the, those offices. We have to accept the apostles that Jesus Christ has appointed unto us. We have to accept the prophets that our Lord Jesus Christ has appointed unto us. And we have to honor and to, and to follow. Amen and amen. And to allow them guide us into knowing the things that God is doing. And then to also guide us into the advancing which the apostles help us to do. Amen and amen. I believe we, we, we already understand that. That's why the apostles have wisdom to distill prophetic releases. Amen. They are able to distill that into practical steps, into structures, into systems. Amen. So that we'll be able to actualize those things that have been released. So for example, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Sorry for the break in transmission. All right. Uh, he considered himself a wise master builder. So uh, being apostolic, now this, has, this doesn't really have to do with being an apostle. Being apostolic comes with wisdom. There is, there is great wisdom that comes with uh, the apostolic. All right. So there's that wisdom to distill uh, whatever God is releasing into practical steps and structures and systems in order to actualize them. If you can hear me, can you uh, whip your hand? Okay, I can see the comments now. All right, uh, thank you so much. Uh, all right, so I guess we'll just uh, go on. Apologies for the uh, break in transmission. I'll try to double up for the time we, uh, we lost. 
So if, if you're over there, please, I want us to stay and, and not get distracted. If you can get your scriptures, I want you to just read. Let's just read two verses. Ezra chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. It says, then the prophet Agai and Zechariah, the son of Edo, all right, the prophet, prophesied, in fact, they say prophets, prophesied to the Jews, all right, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem, hallelujah, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of God, of the God of Israel, who was over them, so Zerubbabel, the son of Shetel, and Jeshua, the son of Josadak, rose up and began to build. Amen. Did you see that? Now, the prophets, first of all, prophesied. So you see the prophetic ministry in operation, first of all, and then the builders, as, as we said, the apostolic dimension of the body of Christ, we being apostolic, is we then beginning to build, to advance the things that uh, God has, you know, stewarded by the prophets. And that's what you see there. And he said, and the prophets were of God were with them, helping them. So that is basically um, all that is going to be happening in all the seven days. Hallelujah. But let me just lay a foundation. Uh, uh, let, uh, let me lay a foundation for the other things that we are going to be saying. So when we say the theme is next generation, the waiting, the camping, and the marching. Now, very quickly, our time is fast spent. I'm going to, I'm going to take us through the, 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 the journey, why we consider ourselves to be an army, and the import of that for us. I'm going to be quite fast, and we are going to read uh, quite a number of scriptures along the way. Now, I want you to take note of this. The journey of the body of Christ, are we together, please? Please don't get distracted. The journey of the body of Christ started with us being bought, okay? And then we became the betrothed bride of Christ. In other words, excuse me, to be betrothed, to be betrothed means um, to be enfianced, all right? It's like a ceremony of, let's say, like engagement where a, a uh a man who is who intends to 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 marry a particular young and beautiful lady then comes to our family and you know uh, says i want to marry and then he comes with gifts but as at that time they are not yet they have not gotten married okay so our journey as the body of christ as a church starts with us being betrothed being the betrothed bride of christ so we are currently the betrothed bride of Christ. And then from the point of being betrothed to Christ, then we move, uh, of course, uh, that's, now when we talk about the betrothed bride of Christ, now you know that uh, according to Ephesians, okay, so let's just go there and uh, hopefully all of that begins to uh, join together. Ephesians chapter number, uh, chapter number five. Ephesians five and then verse 25 down to 27 Ephesians 5 and then 25 down to 27 so it says husbands love your wives just as Christ has loved the church and gave himself for her so again you can see that Jesus gave himself for us with uh sorry that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word so you see uh us moving from the betrothed bride to becoming one with Christ, all right, his body, becoming his body. So uh, we, we became his body. And then from the point of being his body, he then began to uh, nourish his body, to sanctify his body. And then this continues. He also continues to build his body. Amen and amen. And that's what we, we, we saw in uh, chapter four of that same epistle, uh, verse 12. I think I quoted it the other time, where it says that he gave some to be apostles and some to be prophets and some to be evangelists and some to be pastors and teachers for the equipping of saints, for the perfection of the saints, so that they can do the work of the ministry for the building up of the body of Christ. So he is building his body. Now, we are actually looking at the church in different dimensions, in different phases. The church um, being bought, a payment was made, the gift was given, 
the gift is the Holy Spirit was given to the body of Christ, given to us, and then uh, we are now being nourished as his body. Amen. We are being nourished as his body is building us up till we all come right to the fullness of the stature of the measure, uh, uh, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen and amen. And so that, that's the next thing that happens. And then from the point of the body, we are being nurtured. Now, the building is preparing us to become the worthy bride. Amen. I'm trying to hasten up uh, because of our time, but let's just open uh, some, some scriptures. Um, okay, not, not yet. Let's just uh, proceed for time. Uh, so it, it makes us prepared uh, as a worthy bride. Okay, let's just jump over to um, Revelation chapter 19, if you have your scripture over there. Revelation chapter 19. And then we are going to read verse um, 11. From verse 11. Revelation 19 from 11. Now it says, Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire. Amen. And on his head were, the, were many crowns. He had a name written that had uh, no one that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. Now, and the Hermes in heaven. Excuse me, please. And the Hermes in heaven, clothed in fine linen and 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 white and clean, followed him on white. I think I picked up the wrong. Uh, okay, verse six instead. Yes, not that. Verse six. 9 verse 6, it says, and I heard, 19 rather, Revelations 19 verse 6, it says, and I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty thunderings saying, alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth, let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. Look at the next statement, for the marriage of the Lamb has come. Hallelujah. So it means that we are not yet married to Christ, all right? But that point is coming, and we are being prepared for the marriage. We are being prepared for that marriage. Hallelujah. So it says, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. Amen. So there is that position in the body of Christ that we are currently taking, that we are... Uh, uh, as it were, preparing ourselves, making ourselves ready for the return uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen. But the truth is that is not, that is not where it's supposed to end. We are not just supposed to be um, the betrothed bride that is being nourished. The body is, you know, uh, Christ is nourishing his body and is, you know, uh, you know, the, 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 the wife is making herself ready and the marriage of the lamb is going to happen eventually in the age to come, uh, not in the age to come, in the last, like, uh, in the last days. Amen and amen. That's not the only stance we have to take. There's another stance that we are expected to take. And that is the body of Christ, that the church has an army. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Now, before we talk about the army aspect let me just uh complete the part of the worthy bride so when we become the worthy bride all right that's what we find in if you flip to chapter 21 chapter 21 uh of that same revelations from verse one it says now i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away Amen and amen. Hallelujah. It says the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there were no more seas. There were no more seas. And it says, then I, John, saw the holy city. It says, I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming out, coming down out of heaven from God. Amen. Coming out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for our husband. So you can already see that the, the city, okay, I'm sorry, we couldn't go, we can't go through all that tonight because of our, our time is fast spent. The holy city 
that we read about in Revelations 21, 22 is also talking about the bride. It's talking about the body of Christ. It's talking about us that we have been built up to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. It's saying that we are now Christ-like. It's saying that we are now uh, no longer uh, uh, um, no longer slaves to sin, no longer oppressed by you know devils and all that. We are now extending the victory of Christ. We are now adorned as a bride. We are there's no uh, uh, you know all the imbalances in the church is no longer there. There is that unity of the faith. Amen. Then we are being built as a city. Glory to God. And then the end of things is that we are being built as God's temple, as God's holy temple. Now, if you remember where we read the other time, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, it says that we are being fitly framed together to form a holy habitation for God, a temple for God. So you discover that in Revelations here, I'm just trying to summarize again because of our time. In Revelations here, that city does not have a temple inside it because the, the city itself was the temple. Because God now begins to dwell inside of the city, inside of the church, inside of the body of Christ, the new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord forevermore. But let's just uh, jump back to what we're talking about, what we're looking at uh, regarding the, the, the bride, not just being the bride, but also and Hami, also the Hami. Uh, let's turn our Bibles to Solomon, uh, sorry, Songs of Solomon, rather, uh, chapter number six. Songs of Solomon, uh, chapter number six. And um, we we'll start our reading from, from verse 10, I believe. Uh, yes, chapter six and verse 10. It says, amen, are we still together? It says, who is she who looks forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun? Can we read the last line together? I want to go, awesome as an army with banners. So he's saying, he's describing a woman, right? Of course, this is a prophetic interpretation of the scripture. Uh, is describing a woman, is describing a bride, all right? She is beautiful, she is fair, but she is also awesome as an army with banners. Hallelujah. Look at verse 13. It says, return, return, O Shulamite, return, return, that we may look upon you. So it tells you that it's not just a bride that is just there. It's a woman that is fair. It's a woman that is beautiful. Glory to God. So the body of Christ is expected to not just be um, um, what's it called now? And uh, uh, it's not just expected to just be the body and the bride, but it's also expected to be an army. Now, uh, if we will give a summary of all we've said about the army, the bride, the city, the temple, is that the the, the bride is the eternal inheritance of the son. The is the completion of Christ. Uh, is you know. Uh, the, the king, Jesus himself, is the head, and then we, the rest of the body, we, his bride, we are joint heirs with him. That's what the Bible when it says that we shall reign with him. And then the, the city part of it, of things is we reflecting the nature of God, reflecting the character of God, reflecting the glory of God, reflecting the righteousness of God, the righteousness and justice um, uh, of, of, of God. Amen and amen. Now, the army, the body of Christ, the church as an army is where the context of uh, this summit comes to play. Amen. And I, I think I'm going to just uh, close, in, close in on that. There were quite a, lot, a number of scriptures we were supposed to go through, but we couldn't go through uh, uh, for, for time's sake. But here is the catch. The church as an army executes God's desire to establish his kingdom in the earth. You know, we are taking that, that leap to, to just closing in on the army. The, the church as a army will execute God's desire to establish his kingdom in the earth. Now, without the army, there can be no uh, kingdom advancement. 
There is no kingdom advancement without a army. And this is very important for us to understand. You know, we are the ones that will enforce Christ's victory in the earth. Um, 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 Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13, the Lord was speaking. He says, he says of uh, unto whom or concerning which angel did he say that sit until I make your enemies a footstool. And the same thing is also found in um, chapter 10, verse 12, down to 13. It says, he said to the son to sit at his right hand until he makes his enemy his footstool. Hallelujah. Are we together? Are we be blessed? Are we blessed? Now, God is not just going to make Christ's enemy his footstool just like that. It is going to happen by the means of the church. It is going to happen by the means of the body of Christ. Glory to God. It is going to happen through you and I. We are the army, all right? We are the army that advance the kingdom of God at this present time. And that's why we are looking at the waiting. We are looking at the camping and then we are looking at the marching because we are also what? We are also an army. And then that army is also described in Joel chapter two. Joel chapter 2, and from verse 1 down to 11, it describes the army. In chapter 3, from verse 9 to 13, it tells us about the achievement, what the achievement of the army of you and I, what our achievement is going to be like. It explains that in Joel chapter 3, verse 9 to 13. And then in chapter 2, verse 18, verse 28, rather, 28 down to 29, it talks, it talks to us about the empowerment of this army. That's why God says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Now, his regard is talking about that same army that was described in verse 1 down to verse 11. Hallelujah. Are we together? So we are the army. We are the frontiers. We are the ones that will advance the kingdom of God. Now, we are not advancing the kingdom of God as a bride. A bride cannot advance the kingdom of God. A body cannot advance the kingdom of God. It is an army that will advance the kingdom of God. And it is important for us to begin to see ourselves and begin to understand that we are not just a bride. We are not just supposed to enjoy the beauty of Christ, but there is also the responsibility upon us as a generation to stand as an army amen and amen to stand as an army i think uh maybe we just quickly jump uh, into scripture as i begin to uh, uh close as i begin to uh, to round off now israel the people of israel now they were the people of god just like the church they were in slavery in egypt and then there was the exodus right? They were delivered out of Egypt the same way that we were, we were delivered out of darkness, all right, to begin a journey with God. Now, so they were just a people, they were just a people, and then God began to deal with them, God began to wash them, God began to teach them faith. So you can liken that to God beautifying, to Jesus Christ beautifying the bride. So at that time, they were the betrothed bride, amen. They were the betrothed bride, and then they were being taken through the journey. So Exodus, uh, Genesis is like the beginning of things, right? Talks about creation, talks about the promise, just like the new creation of the body of Christ and the promise of eternal life, the promise of fully inheriting Christ, of fully inheriting God and all that God is, uh, true godliness. And then there is Exodus, all right, which is the deliverance, going out, all right, uh, regarding to our fall, the fall of man, amen, regarding to the fall of man and our redemption through the blood, glory to God. And then the next book of the Bible there is Leviticus, regarding to Levi, amen, regarding to Levi and regarding to priesthood, sanctification. So it takes us back to what I was trying to explain now, that Israel had gone through those phases, amen, they had gone through those phases. And what happened was in order for the, for the will of God for them to come to pass, they needed to be transformed into an army. Amen. Amen. Are we together? Israel used to be just families. They used to be just people. They used to be just the ecclesia, the called out ones. They used to just be, oh, church, right? But there's no way church is going to advance the kingdom of God in quotes as the called out ones. They, need, they needed to shift their attention from just being, oh, we are just people on a journey. We are journeying to Canaan. We are journeying to promised land. But that's, is not just going to happen 
casually. It's going to be it was going to happen by them transforming, by them being transformed to Anhami. And so Anhami was formed of Israel. Amen. After they had been called out. So it's not just enough to be a Christian, to go to church. You have to join the army. You have to see yourself as a member of the army that, that, that bring forth the advancement of the kingdom of God, that bring forth the, the enforcement of the victory of Christ. Now turn your Bibles with me to Numbers chapter one. You are going to see what I'm saying very, clear, uh, very clearly now. And I think uh, things are going to become more coagulated now. Numbers chapter number one. Now it says, now the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the tabernacle of the meeting of meeting on the first day of the second month in the second year after they had come out of the land of Egypt. So after they had come out from the land of Egypt, the same way after the body of Christ, after we were, you know, saved from the prison of sin and death, that word came forth. And then God told Moses, God told Moses, he says, take a census of all the congregation of the children of Israel. Take is like saying, take a census of all the, the, the believers in the body of Christ of the children of Israel by their families, all right, by their father's houses, according to the number of names, every male individually. Now look at verse three, from 20 years old and above, all who are able to go to war in Israel, you and Aaron shall number them by their Hermes. So you see that in the advancement of uh, the, 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 the actualization of the promise of God to Israel, moving them out of Egypt, taking them to, to Canaan, to the promised land, the same way God moving us Christians from slavery in death, slavery of sin, he brought us out our, our exodus. The next thing is we need to be numbered. Now, the, this generation, and that's why I, I'm very grateful to God that most of us who are uh, at this conference are young people. It was designed for us. It was designed for this generation. Uh, the scripture is Numbers chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. Amen and amen. Everyone was counted. For as long as you are 20 years old, you are expected to be a soldier. You are expected to be a member. You are expected to be a part of the happy. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Now, without, if the body of Christ, without an adjustment in our stance, okay, there can be no kingdom advancement. We have to change our orientation from just being peoples to being an army. Amen. And Hami that is on the mission. Amen and amen. So we ought to move from the called out ones to becoming those that are sent as an Hami, to becoming trained and becoming deployed as a marching Hami that is going to take all the land. Remember that the promise of God that came to Abraham and also came to Moses, all right? They came with God saying, I will give you the land of the Gagasite, of the Jebusite, of this Canaanite, of Sodomite, and all, you know, a lot of lands, many territories God had promised them. But the territories which are the kingdoms of this world, amen and amen, the kingdoms of this world that will later become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, they will not just happen if we, our generation, we keep seeing ourselves as just church people, as just ordinary people, as just people. We have to also see ourselves as an army. Remember the Shulamite woman that we read about in Songs of Solomon. That prophecy is regarding the body of Christ. It says that she is beautiful, but at the same time, she is like an army, like armies with banners. Amen and amen. Glory to God. So the goal, now remember that the goal was the city. The goal was to inherit all those lands, which is more like conquering the kingdoms of this world for God, conquering media for God, conquering politics for God, conquering economics for God, conquering um, um, 
um, arts and entertainment and all the seven mountains, all the spheres of human influence, young people. We are supposed to capture all those for good, but it will not happen if we don't change our stance to people that are on a mission. We are not just called out ones. Now we must be transformed into the sent out ones. Now you discover that Israel till today, Israel, the, 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 there is, there is, uh, um, there is, the, the, uh, I've, forgotten, I've forgotten the, the word they call it now, but if you are 18 years old in Israel today, you must participate in national military service. Every, every adult, every Israeli citizen that is an adult is trained to fight. But the question is, how many believers are trained to fight? How many of us are trained to advance the kingdom of God? How many of us are trained to bear the flag of the kingdom and to go, you know, uh, right into the world, to go right into all the territories that God has promised, that God has said, that God is waiting for us to conquer because it says that our Lord Jesus Christ, who is ascended into heaven, he says he should sit down as his right hand until he makes his enemy full stool. But remember that it is the church. Now, let's quickly go to, as I begin to round off, my time is up. If we go to Ephesians chapter number, uh, I think it's chapter one. It's chapter one, chapter one, chapter one. Yes, chapter one. Now look at verse, let's read from, ah, because of time, from verse 20. It says, which he walked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and, and seated him at, the, at his right hand in the heavenly, excuse me, in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers, might and dominion and everything that is named, not only in this age, but in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, we fill it all in all. So it is the body of Christ that will subdue all things under Christ's feet. Amen. Because the feet is part of the body. Hallelujah. The feet is part of the body. So the, the, the entire world, all the kingdoms of this world must be subject under the feet of the body of Christ. It is not just Jesus Christ that has the victory. We must also take part in that victory. And God is waiting for us to take responsibility. God is waiting for this generation to take responsibility to enforce the victory of Christ as an army. Amen and amen. As an army. Glory to God. As an army. Now, God told Moses to number Israel. Amen. Now, the numbering here, which is where I close, the numbering here is not just counting. The numbering here is not just counting. The, this numbering is a marking. All right. It is a sealing. It is a separation, a separating. It is an appointing. It is a recognizing as a whole amongst others. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Uh, most likely, maybe in, in my subsequent sessions, um, my second session, I'm going to go over this numbering aspect and then move into the core of the teaching. But my burden to us tonight is for us to be able to, number one, understand the basics of the prophetic and the apostolic, and at the same time, to understand the, the, the different dimensions of the body of Christ, the different faces of the body of Christ. We as being the betrothed bride that Jesus Christ himself, through the rest of the body, all of us, we are contributing one to the other. And then we are building up the body of Christ. Every one of us, we are building it up. And then we are making ready a worthy bride, a worthy bride that is well adorned. And then we saw that in Revelation, uh, this worthy bride that is well adorned is presented as the new Jerusalem, as the city of God. Amen. And then it tells us, it also, we also read there that in, in, uh, at that time, after the new heaven and the new earth, God himself is going to inhabit that city. God is going to, you know, be in the midst of the city. God is going to be the light of that city and there's no need for a temple anymore in that city the temple because the temple would have become the city because uh, a temple is what houses divinity and that's what we have glory to god the bible tells us that ye are the temple of god glory to god now it's not just individuals we are collectively the temple of god so if the church 
has different manifestations or different faces as the bethroned bride and then the body of Christ and then the worthy bride and then the city and then the temple, we must also pay attention to the army aspect because seeing the church as the army is what helps us to advance the kingdom of God, is what helps us to advance, is what helps us to enforce the victory of Christ, is what helps us to enforce the authority of Christ, is what helps us to enforce the kingdom of God in the earth. So we must change our stance. There's a picture I wanted to show us um, I'm going to show us subsequently, or maybe before we close, or just after we close, I'm going to put, put the picture up. Now, the picture shows somewhere in, in somewhere in this world, or maybe I, I just try to see if I can, if I'm able to fire it up uh, when I close. Somewhere in this world, you see very young children. Please, I, I don't want you to jump off the call without seeing that picture. Please ensure you wait so that you see the picture and then you can grab what I'm trying to say. Now, they have a system for training children right from age two, one, when they can not even pronounce something. You see them chanting things. You see them reciting things. At age 10, age 12, they can recite the entire book that they have. You see them at age six carrying slates uh, in the northern regions. You see them writing. You see them, you know, chanting things after their trainers, chanting things after. And we have no idea that that is another kind of army that has been raised. But we as a generation, I'm asking you, I'm putting it to you, I'm putting it to us, myself inclusive, which way. Are we training? Do we even know that we are an army? Do we even understand that we are supposed to be an army? And then how are we mobilizing the army for the kingdom of God? How are we mobilizing an army to enforce the kingdom of God? Are we just sitting down, enjoying church, enjoying cool music, enjoying cool, cool worship, cool lights, and all of that stuff? Amen. Again, my challenge to us is this. Let us change our mindset. We are not just Christians. We are Christian soldiers. We are the army of God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. We give you all glory and all honor for bringing your word to us. Thank you for the release of the spirit. Thank you for understanding. Thank, for, thank you for all that you have stewarded in our midst. Thank you for the ups, for the downs. Thank you for the ministration of the Holy Spirit in the hearts of every listener. Lord, as we go, we ask, oh God, that we are established in the things that we have heard in the name of Jesus. We commit the rest of this conference, of this summit into your able hands. As the rest of the speakers are going to be instructing us, bringing your will to us, we ask, oh God, that you bring your light unto us. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory. Honor and praise and adoration belongs to you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for coming. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Can we rejoice in the Lord? Can we rejoice in the Lord? Wow, I'm so blessed by the word of God. Can we appreciate God for an awesome moment tonight? Can we thank him for the minister of God that the Lord has used for us tonight? Can we begin to appreciate God? Can we begin to appreciate God? Can we thank God for the heart trance, for the heart trance the Lord has given to the ministers, minister of God? Can we begin to thank God and can we begin to pray for him that even as he has watered us with the word of God that is watered back, that he goes from strength to strength, from glory to glory, that is forever and his day by daily day by day refreshed in the name of Jesus. Can we begin to pray? Can we begin to pray for the ministers of Minister of God, can we begin to pray, can we begin to appreciate God for the word of God that has come to us powerfully this night? Can we begin to thank God? Can we thank God? And I want us to sow a word of prayer into the life of Brother Labodi of Payemi, that the Lord Almighty will continue to fill him with the wisdom of God. He will continue to fill him in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying for him. Make sure you are praying for the minister of God. Make sure you are praying. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Can we pray for ourselves even as we close tonight? That the Lord Almighty, we grant us the strength. 
He will grant us strength to be doers of God's word. That as God's word has come to us tonight, that the word of God has come to us tonight, that we are transformed by the word in the name of Jesus. Jesus, that we are transformed by the word in the name of Jesus. Maso bikoza eleto shata ya beregeti alabadoza asi vanam tiketi zivitoza. Oh, we rise in the name of the Lord as an army of Christ in the name of Jesus as Christian army in the name of Jesus. Oh, ranamana shata ya in the name of Jesus we rise, we rise and we take our place in the intent of God at this time in the name of. Jesus, oh Renamana Shataya, a combranitos of the ante sialavados. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, make sure you are praying. Make sure you are praying. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we rejoice in the Lord tonight? If you are so blessed by the word of God, can we rejoice in the Holy Ghost? Glory. I'm so blessed and refreshed. Okay, let's take a look at the video um, bro, Olabode Okoyemi was talking about the video of um, some little, little children when they are still young, chanting some things and making some chants and everything. Yeah, I think it's coming up. Okay, it's a picture. Okay, I, I hope we got that. I hope we got that. So we can see the picture, like right from when they are young, they made them say this. So we are we can do we can do more than this because we have the power of God. The Holy Ghost is in us. So we are able to do, to do, to come in line with the will and purpose of God, to rise as a soldier of Christ, as a mighty soldier. The Lord Almighty will strengthen us in Jesus' name. We bless the name of the Lord for tonight for an awesome moment with the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So, people of God, tomorrow is an awesome moment. Again, an awesome time with the Lord. We can see what we have today. We are just starting and a lot of packages and a lot of mighty things God has said to do for us in this summit. So when you are coming tomorrow, make sure you come with at least three persons. Don't come alone. Send the link, send the invite, let your friends, let them register. Let everybody around you, those people at your workplace, your classmates, your friends, let them come and come and enjoy Christ. This is this is this is a, like this is a word for the body of Christ at this time. So we are not small. We are many. We are many. So it's not meant for just a particular set of people or just few people. It is meant for the body of Christ, the army of Christ at this time. So do well to come with your friends, send the invite, send the link and make sure you prepare your act even while you go with your day-to-day -day activity be conscious be aware of this power of god of the fullness of god in you so you can actually go back to your jottings and to the ministration of today so that it can prepare you ahead for the next session tomorrow and i pray even as we prepare our heart tomorrow the lord almighty will strengthen us in the name of jesus can we pray as we close this meeting for today Heavenly Father, we thank you for this awesome moment. We thank you for how you started at this time. We thank you for your word has come to us this night. We thank you because your word is light. Your word is active. It's sharp and it's quick. Lord, we thank you for how you started in the body of Christ. Lord Almighty, for all we have received tonight, Lord, we receive grace to act, to do according to your words in the name of Jesus, that your word be fruitful in us and your word will bear so much, much fruit in us that will become light to generation in the name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, we thank you for uh, the minister of God that you've used for us today. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless him and he continues to grow in the knowledge of your will in the name of Jesus. And when we shall gather again tomorrow, Lord, we pray you strengthen us and you equip us for all we need in the name of Jesus. Thank you, gracious Father. Thank you for answering our prayers. We return all glory to you. 
No man on earth deserves to take the glory that belongs to God. All glory belongs to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, awesome Father. In Jesus' powerful name, we prayed. Amen and amen. Glory to Jesus. So as a big family, can we say the prayer of grace even as we close the session for today? The grace in fellowship. One, two, go. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. If you have a neighbor beside you, kindly say surely to the neighbor. And if you are alone, you can say to yourself, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. For I am the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. People of God, we see tomorrow. Have a wonderful night rest. Hallelujah.